What is up, bros? Josh here. In today's video, we are going over version two of the Udachi. Yes, the Poi Destroyers, the Tier Seven IGN Premium Destroyer. And this thing has gotten some buffs recently. A small buff to its torps, which were pretty painful to play the first time. And I'll be honest, this ship was still a chore to play ever since it even got its buffs. Um, I still find this play style, in my opinion, I just don't really like IGN torp boats, but this one is an IGN torp boat that still continues to somehow be bad at being an IGN torp boat. Now I get it has the whole thing about it being the Udachi, it being that whole novelty destroyer, but honestly, I'm still missing what this ship brings to the game. Uh, IGN DDs at this tier, Akatsuki, which is a nice mix of both gunboat, if you will want to call it that. I guess a better hybrid for the IGN line. And then the Shiratsuyu, which has, of course, either the reload consumable, which is extremely nice, giving it that really uh, destroyer, that torp destroyer play of loading a ton of torps at one time, then with the reload booster, and then again. And the Akatsuki being this mix of kind of the old school Fubuki feel of three sets of three. This one is kind of the Shiratsuyu, but not having the chance to play the the torp reload booster and sticking with smoke but on top of that you have worse guns and honestly still worse torps the buffs though however were the torp detections the torps before were a laughable 2.5 kilometers which made them pretty much the worst torps in the game and then uh that's gone from 2.5 down to 1.9 and then the torp reload went from 101 to 91 seconds now we've seen that speed at uh, uh originally the 101 that's what you would find in the shiratsuyu it's basically the same thing but now we get the bump down and then with torp reload con or torp reload captain skill you get down to 81.9 seconds which is pretty quick but still the torps are point or 1.9, which is the worst torps at this tier for destroyers, both the Shiratsuyu as well as the Akatsuki have 1.6. Now that may not seem like a lot, but it is a third of a kilometer, which adds about 20% more, a little less than that, honestly, 20% more uh, reaction time to uh, compare to the IGN. And this is a good game overall. It is very unexciting and in my opinion kind of shows off the uh the play style of this ship and then there's a really good example of the difference between normal IGNDDs torps and then the Udachi's torps but this game still uh, I found this ship to be an absolute ch chore there were certain situations where I, I think even during the stream we stream this all live on twitch.tv come check this out we stream all the work in progress ships but I think there was a situation where I said man I wish I was in a Shiratsuyu at this point because you were kind of running and kind of you know going around your day trying to do a thing but you can't do it, it just amazes me how Orally, this ship kind of does everything you you want to be a dd and you want something to kind of set itself and be good like at least it's a shiratsuyu but it has better guns or there's some kind of trade-off because your torps are just straight up worse now they are farther they are 15 kilometers and i run torpedo accelerator because uh, the torps aren't extremely fast so what i did is they are 12 kilometer torps you know, I can't actually bring out 12 kilometer torps, I think at uh, 62 knots, so pretty uh, decent, but the, again, we go back to the uh, detection of the torps of 1.9 kilometers, so that's the downside, and you'll see later in this game exactly what I mean, but really what you do is you get a lot of swing and misses when it comes to this DD, and you are sitting there just twiddling your thumbs waiting to do something, it's not like you have good guns that you can start throwing some shells out, Tier 7 has gotten extremely competitive for gunboat lines. You have things like the Haida, you have things like the Sims, you have things like even the buffed Mahan. You have some pretty nasty destroyers that you're going to have to contend with. Now, the upside of your ship is that you are extremely stealthy. You do have 5.7 kilometer detection, which is the lowest at this tier, tied with the Shiratsuyu and the Haida. But... I think that's the lowest one, at least relatively close. But on top of that, you have worse gun reload than the Shiratsuyu. And of course, again, I can't harp enough that your torps are the, basically the worst at this tier. You do have range, however, but they are slow uh, at that range. So I do kind of recommend the torp acceleration. You still get 12 kilometers on it, but still they're just completely underwhelming. 
Um, I did. I really did not like. I, this isn't even that impressive of a game. I just felt like there is a situation at the end of this game that uh, is a really good indicator, a really good example of the just the kind of the lackluster and kind of shows the what could have been with another DD compared to this. Uh, things like the Akatsuki, which has an extremely fast reload uh, with Torp Reload, it's under 70 seconds for it. And again, you are throwing out nine Torps on that, three sets of three at 10 kilometers. On top of that, though, you have actually pretty solid guns. Now, IGN guns don't really get the credit that they deserve. They have a very high alpha damage, tend to be relatively low. Now, I'm talking about the Torp the destroyers that have um, the the decent alpha guns. Obviously, the the gunboat line is very different. It has a very high reload, very low alpha damage, but you need inertia fuse. And uh, really, the majority of this game, I just felt like, uh, okay, I'm missing torps, missing torps, missing torps, missing torps. It is a pattern when you play this gun, or play this ship, and uh, I really wish I was in kind of anything else. Uh, I, I just didn't really find it fun at all. And it's kind of a bummer. I was hoping that maybe they would bring something like, even though it's slow, the reload at nine seconds, that they would bring maybe like a reload consumable or on its guns or I don't know, something. But you get a lot of what I just did right there. You get a lot of single torp hits. And with the IGN torp line, you tend to get like a bunch, maybe two or three in a salvo because there's just so many going out. I found with the Udachi, you are getting one at a time. And then on top of that, you kind of, if you want to go your guns, you can, but then you're just kind of waiting for the next set. Now, they are a little bit buffed, obviously, with the reload, putting them at a pretty competitive run. But I that detection of the Torps really does hinder them on how much they're able to do, because even if the i would rather take the longer reload of the shiratsuyu or the reload consumable imagine if i was in a, a shiratsuyu right there that nelson would have been dead already and we would have been able to maybe load on a, some on something else there's a couple of these situations that if i was in a shiratsuyu things would have died already if i was in an akatsuki i would have been able to gun down that other akatsuki a tad more there's a lot of situations where i just still don't see what the ship brings to the game that that's the part that's the biggest thing i'm missing other than just it being a novelty for what it stands for i'm missing the entire message or thing that this is supposed to be and right now this new tier 7 destroyer as soon as it goes into the game it's by far the worst ign dd that's at tier 7 it may be the worst tier 7 destroyer in the game as if it goes in like this and this is the buff version and i even talked with another cc about this ship and the only upside about the udachi right now and i don't want this to be a whole roast of this destroyer i'm just missing the point i guess but the 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 only shining light that the udachi brings to the game is that it's better than what it was <laughs> that's that's literally it right now and this game is basically just an absolute wash i think we played five games in, in the first in in my stream last now with the udachi didn't win, win a single one wasn't really able to have an impact on any single game um even being top tier bottom tier uh i just wasn't able to have an impact because of the state of this ship there are so many situations where if i was in other dds certain ships like if i was in the gajamata if i was in the sims if i was in really anything else I would have been having an impact, but with this, the IGNDD, which I feel like has been a very power crept line, and what I mean by power crept is uh, the line, in my opinion, has gotten much weaker, especially in these mid tiers. I think tier seven has very has been very power crept, but there's continued to be lines that have gotten stealthier or ships that have gotten stealthier and really kind of just had better torps. I mean, how, when's the last time really like an IGNDD has kind of uh, been better than the Gaja or been better than the Haida. There's a lot of things. Now, we do kind of have a nice little comeback here in a way, but as you see, we're down pretty heavily. Uh, but using the guns and using the Torps is really the thing. But again, not much potential coming out of this destroyer. Uh, it were elsewhere if I would have had the Akatsuki or even the Shiratsuyu, especially the Shiratsuyu. I like the Shiratsuyu because it goes full in on the torp idea and i really like that where the akatsuki is kind of this hybrid um because it's kind of more like the gunboat line and uh you have this kind of 
in between. What do I want? Do I want to go full gunboat and be super stealthy? Or do I want to kind of be a little less stealthy but have better guns? And you get to make that choice. This one is like, all right, I want to be a torpo. I want to be stealthy. But then I want to have worse torps. And then I want to have worse guns. And then I kind of want to just be worse at everything. And the example we're going to have right here that really shows just the difference that this ship could have had compared to another battleship. Now, IGN DDs obviously are known for obliterating straight line sailing battleships. We've all been in that spot where we're learning the game and we are sailing in a straight line. And then as a battleship player, we all think Torp's overpowered. <laughs> this is something we just accept and we all go through. And then we learn that Wazda is in, in truly overpowered and we start to move our battleship a little bit more and don't go on a straight line sailing. Now, this Koenig is still in the new player process and we'll start sailing in a straight line. So we're gonna set up on a nice line. We're trying to see, I'm trying to see if I can actually bring this game back. Um, I'm thinking, hey, I go against maybe this Minikaze, I could potentially, or the Kamikaze, maybe kill him, you know, maybe the Bretang and the Lion could kill the Miyoko, the Laglass, you know, maybe, maybe some things could happen. It's tough, we're down, but it's still doable. And I'm thinking, hey, this Koenig, sailing straight line, he is white line sailing. I'm thinking this might just work. So let's line up on a nice little gray line torp run. We'll hopefully run into the straight line. He just repped one fire. If a, if a flood sticks, it's gonna stick and we should be okay. But this is just the example of what the outcome could have been if I was in another DD. Now I remember that it's just 0.3 kilometers on the react or 0.3 kilometers on the detection difference. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but again, that's almost 20% longer reaction time to torps now what that means is like the speed of the torps you know blah 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 about 20 percent more for the reaction time so it doesn't seem that bad he's sailing in a straight line so we're gonna line these up now i want you to watch what ends up happening with these torps as as they get really close to the ship now i can get it pretty close obviously the akatsuki could have gotten this close 6.3 kilometer detection on it and the shiratsu obviously could have got a lot closer and probably with the lack of uh with the lack of things going on we could have probably had our torp reload booster up and kind of confirmed the kill um throwing the double set out and then reloaded throwing the double set out we could have sent 16 torps we only have eight to send out here and he's still just straight line sailing so no big deal so far and this is honestly the one of the things that I kind of pointed out as being, well, this kind of sucks. And there's a good example of how poor these torps are. So as we zoom in, just like that, the same exact thing, straight line sailing battleship has the chance to avoid the torps because he saw them from so far away. And again, just got a single torp on that, where if we were probably in the Akatsuki, most likely we would have had an extra torp on that, if not more, which he would have He's flooding, as you as you can see right here. Shiratsuyu, we would have been out sending out double the amount of torps. And really anything else, we could have probably smoked up and really started to use the guns if it was the Haida or the Mahan or anything like that. We could have definitely gone. And if I was in the Mahan, I could have probably put another set of torps because it has the other side here. So I don't know. I'm still missing the point. I don't know what Wargaming is going to do with this ship. Uh, one other torp hit would have definitely killed that, and we would have had a little bit more time. Uh, we probably still wouldn't have won this game but in the end it still wouldn't have mattered but here we'll put some out on the batang as well but i'm i don't know i i feel like this is a very tough thing to sell i know that the ign torp line is extremely popular with the player base and really something that a lot of people enjoy to play and i do appreciate that but i'm missing the point of this ship i'm really missing the point the the punishment of having a line or having a ship that the torps are just spotted from space uh, on a, that's basically all you have. That is just a bummer to me. And again, Bretang was able to just straight line sail and he was able to avoid them and only takes one. I, I would love to see this thing be viable. I like the idea of torp destroyers kind of getting some power back in this game. I know a lot of people may not like that because of torps and blah, blah, blah. But I would like that there were to be some life in the IGN Torp line for it to be kind of competitive at the tier because this thing just doesn't bring anything to the table. It really, really doesn't. And uh, this will just be a slow, slow, painful loss um, through the rest of this game because of how just spread out everything is. 
could I have won this game in another DD? Potentially. Could I have had more impact in any of the other IGN destroyers at this tier? Absolutely. So to me, that's the downside of a IGN destroyer or a premium ship in general, not really bringing anything to the table. Um, now, I'm not saying that IGN or premium ships in general need to be stronger than tech tree ships. I don't think that's a good practice to really get into, but I would like them to bring something to the table, and this ship does nothing for that. Uh, it doesn't bring anything to the table at all. Um, it brings basically just a worse Shiratsuyu with less options to play. Um, and even though the range of torps seems optimistic and seems cool to have that extra range, especially if you're getting bottom tier, you can stay farther away. But the thing is that those torps don't end up really doing anything. So the rest of this game is pretty boring, just as is the ship. And we go on to lose this game because the Udachi just struggles to really have an impact overall, in my opinion, on any kind of game, bottom tier, top tier, or either or um but overall this is the second version so it is still work in progress i don't know if we will get another version i don't know if wargaming will think this is the final version i hope not because outside of um this being just sold for what it's known for i just don't really see an impact i, I think the only upside of the udachi right now is it's not as bad as it used to be but at least it is better um, I would like to see maybe just the torps, a small buff to the torps getting on par with the other destroyers. And what I mean by that is let them have a small reload booster, but get them back on par with those 1.6 kilometer range. It doesn't seem like it will mean that much, but there's a couple situations where we probably could have got a couple more torp hits. We could have got another kill, could have been able to put a little bit more pressure on some other ships earlier, and we could have had a completely different outcome just on that. But weak torps on a torp, focus ship does not make for that good of a ship i just can't recommend it as of right now and um, obviously if we do get a final version i will do it is it worth the video but right now i'm missing what this ship is meant to be but version two still work in progress so staff is subject to change and if there is a third version i will obviously keep you guys updated but anyways guys that's it for me hope this video helps you out and keeps you up to date with the udachi the tier 7 ign premium destroyer anyways guys that's it for me hope you guys enjoyed this video remember like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time